Good evening. And welcome to our program, CTMI program, every week. So we are very excited to share the gospel with you all and to be able to trust the Lord and the Holy Spirit to help us Amen. as Christians yes. to faithfully walk with Jesus. Amen. And we all know that we have a race to complete. But before completing the race, we know that the Christian life is never easy. Never easy. That's so why tonight I would like to share with you the grace of God during tests and trials of life. Tests and trials of life as a Christian. I believe that there shall be no confusion concerning the reality of test, trials, afflictions, persecutions. That doesn't mean defeat. On the contrary, at the end of it all is victory. That's what I would like to share with you and open your Bibles with me in James chapter 1. James chapter 1, we read verse 2 to verse 4. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Amen? Amen. Is that quite clear? That the Apostle James speaks from the Holy Spirit and is telling us, Christians, that count it a joy to face, test, trials, and difficulties in our Christian life. 1 Peter chapter 4 is another apostle of Jesus Christ. Verse 12 and 13 will confirm what James wrote. In verse 12, Peter said, Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trials which is to try you. As though some strange thing happened to you. Hmm? Don't think it's weird. It's unnatural ungodly that we face trials and difficulties in our Christian life. Peter said, don't find it strange. James says, count it all joy. <laughs> When you face trials, difficulties, persecution, affliction, sufferings, hmm? because there is a purpose And so many Christians are still arguing today about is it the will of God for Christians to face difficult times or is it the attack of the enemy, the devil? You know, not only God allows things to happen But many times he ordains them in our lives. He ordains them. God is in control of our lives. If we want to serve him and if we take our cross and follow him, 
There are no coincidences. The enemy can come with all his arrows, his plans. But when we serve Jesus with all our hearts, he is a defeated foe. The Apostle John, another apostle of God, says that the enemy cannot even touch you. <laughs> hey? And we as the church is so much concerned about the devil that anything that happened to Christians, it's the devil. It's the enemy. Yes, we know he's like a roaring lion trying to destroy us. Yeah, he's like, he's trying. <laughs> he will succeed in the lives of Christians that do not want to give their lives to Jesus, to take up their cross and follow him. Yes, he can succeed that way. But he won't succeed when Christians take up their cross, run that race, and follow Jesus. And do not find it strange. Count it all joy. Peter the Apostle continues, but rejoice. You are in fire. <laughs> rejoice. That's what he's saying. He's talking about fiery trial. He's not talking about having a headache. No. He's talking about difficult time <laughs> where you can think that you are losing it in the natural. You're losing ground. In other words, let there be no discussion anymore, no argument anymore about test trials, difficulties, persecutions, afflictions in the Christian life. Amen? Amen? God allows them, and many times God ordains them because he's got a good plan. A good plan, not a bad one. Amen? Don't listen to those who preach a diluted gospel. Diluted gospel. We need to preach the full gospel. The true gospel of Jesus Christ. What the first apostle preached and wrote. Amen. And we're coming in a time where we have to stick to the word of God and not to the wisdom of men. Yes. To the word of God. This is the truth. Amen? Amen. No more discussion about it. It's part of our Christian life. How to face them? How to face these trials and tests? Hmm? That's why we need to have faith in God's grace. You can't face them alone. No. We are limited. We are limited. That's why there is the power of God's grace that is being manifested when we are in a deep hole, when we are suffering persecution, when we are afflicted. So many situations of life, God has got a purpose. That's why we need to take them in the spirit and not in the flesh. Take it in the spirit. Have faith in God's grace. The power of God's grace. You remember that supernatural power, strength that God gives us to face that difficult time, whatever we go through, each one of us here, different situations of life. That's why the Apostle James talks about patience. Patience. When you go through fire, when you go through difficult times and persecutions, 
You go through them. And you don't see the light. When is it going to stop? When am I going to be delivered? When things are going to change? Hmm? So if you have faith in God's grace, you'll be patient. You'll continue to stand and believe God. And you will feel the grace of God every day to allow you to stand, to continue. And at the same time, you will feel the Holy Spirit working, working in you. Christians today don't like to be seen as failures. They don't like to be seen as people who can go through hardships. Because there's all sorts of theories and teachings that Christians always need. Wonderful time. We are above everything. Above everything. Special people. Yes, we are special people. Yes, we are. But we must understand how. In which way. All things work together for good to those that love God. All things work together. They work together for good. For good. If God allows it, if God ordains it, it's for our good. It's not to crush us down. That's why there is the power of grace. Amen? Amen. When the Apostle Paul went through his situation in the book of Corinthians, a thorn in the flesh, Mm -hmm. he cried to the Lord three times, set me free, deliver me. Mm -hmm. And what did the Lord tell him? No, my son, my grace is sufficient for you. My grace, my power, my strength will be able to hold you and allow you to continue to serve me, no matter if you, take, if you continue to have this sword in the flesh, you will continue to serve me because my hand is upon your life. I will protect you and I will make you able to do what I want you to do. Amen. I'll make you able to do it. Amen. Amen. And did you see what the Apostle Paul says after that? He says, I glory in my sufferings. I glory in my afflictions. That's what he says. Because when I am weak, then I am strong. I'm strong in God's grace. I can't make it. I can't. I know. I know I've come to the place where if it's not God, it's a crash. If it's not the Lord, it's a crash. But God's plan is not to allow us to crash. God's plan is to pour His grace upon our lives, to give us that strength and that power and that supernatural thing that we feel. God takes us above what we can take. And take us to the peak of that mountain. Of that dark tunnel. And light comes. And let me tell you, my friend, you don't get out of that the same person as when you started to experience that trial. If you take it in the spirit and you experience God's grace, it's for a purpose. It's painful. Painful. And I will even say humbling. Humbling. Because we Christians, the church, for those who do not understand, 
humbling. Painful. Breaking. Tough. As if your world is disappearing. As if there's nothing left to do. You're in the hole. You're in a mess. It's tough. Things are happening inside that no one sees. No one sees. And everybody make their own conclusion about you as a Christian in the hole. You're not in the hole because you have sinned. You're not in the hole because the devil is crushing you. You're in the hole because God wants you to be there so that he can work in you. And each one has got his own cross to bear. We are all different. All different. But let us not discuss about it anymore. Amen? And you know what you're doing when you are in the midst of this experience? Hey? And when you are suffering. You are being broken. You are identifying yourself with the sufferings of Christ. You are taking up your cross and you are following him. You are identifying yourself with his death. Because death is taking place in you when you are in that hole. Yeah? And God's grace can keep you there for a week <laughs> or for a month or for one day. Who knows? Hey? Who knows? He can keep us there. That's why James says, be patient. Experience his grace. In other words, it's never, never too tough for you and for me. There's the power of God's grace at that very moment of time. During the whole process, the power of God's grace. Amen. And how do you think you are you're going out of this hole? How do you think you are getting out after this trial? How do you think? The same person? Never. You're never going to be the same person. But you can run away from it. Oh, yeah. You can run away from it. You can cast out the demon. Huh? You can confess whatever you want to confess. <laughs> That's why the Holy Spirit in you and in me must show us and make us feel that God is in control. God is on the throne. My life and your lives are in his hands. Yeah. It's not time to say, why me? Why me? Great, great men of God have gone through tough, tough times. And have written testimonies of what happened to their own lives. That stays as a testimony of the power of God's grace during that moment of time. Yes. God's grace, it's like a reservoir. It's like a big, huge reservoir that never gets empty. <laughs> never gets empty. 
Can you imagine all Christians, all Christians on the earth, millions of Christians in all the earth going through tough times and trials and afflictions and persecution and all that, and there is still enough God's grace for each one? Yes. Never ends. <laughs> never fails. Never. Never and never and never. So how do you identify yourself with the sufferings of Christ and the death of Christ and God's grace is upon your life and you are standing? Eh? You are standing. God is building you. God is building you. God is forming you. The Bible talks about being built being formed to the image of his son. Amen. And what's the fruit of it all? The fruit of all that. Right? It's life. It's abundant life. It's resurrection life. Amen. So we come to the point where when we, that grace is being manifested upon our lives and allows us to stay there, stay there, stay there, be patient. Eh? And let God work, and let God work, and let God deal with that issue that he needs to deal with in your life. Remember what you're doing here. You're taking up your cross. Do you understand? You are identifying yourself with the sufferings of Christ and with the death of Jesus Christ. Amen. And what comes after death is resurrection. Resurrection life. That's what comes after death. Amen. So each time we are in fire, each time we, everything is breaking loose. We are no more under control. Always remember resurrection life. Always remember life. Amen. So in other words, you're becoming a more spiritual person as God's grace, as the power of God's grace keeps you, keeps you, keeps you until the day of deliverance. Amen. Amen. So in other words, you've come from that place to that place. Amen. You've grown. Amen. Amen. You are more and more in the image of his son, Jesus. And you are obeying God's word. When Jesus said, if anyone wants to follow me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. Now, you can't take out the suffering out of the cross. You can't take out death out of the cross. You can't take out resurrection life out of the cross. It's a package. Yes. Suffering, death, resurrection. Amen? Yes. So as you are in the midst of that trial, your faith is being tried. The trial of your faith. Who do you believe in? What do you believe Where is your trust? Where is your faith? Amen. What's the revelation of grace do you have? In that hole. Amen. One day goes, thank you, Lord. Your grace was with me. Thank you. The next day, same thing. It's not eternal. No. There is a day of resurrection. There is a day when Jesus Christ rose from the dead. And there is a day when you and I we can experience resurrection life. So the, whatever God does with us is for our good. And Christians need to understand that once and for all. 
Don't feel that you are an exception when you are in fire. It's normal. Normal. Amen. Count it all joy. James says. Peter says rejoice. <laughs> right? Paul says give thanks to the Lord in all things. Good times and bad times. Amen. Amen. He's a God of the good times. He's a God of the bad times. He's the same God. He hasn't changed. We are, not, we are not designed to have only good times because then we will remain carnal. We will walk in the flesh. Nothing will happen to us. We'll be a Christian, a baby Christian all our lives. All our lives. And we'll know what we do. We confess the word. That's all we do. We confess the positive words. Eh? We come into positive confession. All sorts of stuff. I close up. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. What does Paul say? Strengthen yourself in the Lord and in the power of his might so that you can face the evil day. Amen. Amen. So let us understand the power of God's grace in the midst of trials, temptations, whatever comes our way. Why? Because we are a people of victory. Amen. 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 God bless you, and we'll see you next time.